All right, so this video is going to be about empirical and molecular formulas. And the empirical formula shows the relative number of atoms of each element, while the molecular formula shows the absolute number of atoms of each element. So suppose I have a compound that has six carbons and six hydrogens. So the molecular formula of this compound would be C6H6. So what is the empirical formula? Well, the empirical formula, as I just mentioned, it shows the relative number of atoms of each element. And since it looks like we have a one-to-one -one ratio of carbon to hydrogen, our empirical formula for C6H6 is just going to be CH. So note that the empirical formula CH could also apply to compounds that have molecular formulas other than C6H6. So we could also have the empirical, or excuse me, the molecular formula C7H7 or C8H8, or it could even be C100H100. All of these, all of these molecular formulas have the empirical formula CH. So. The molecular formula is always an integer multiple of the empirical formula. So if I multiply the empirical formula by n, which is just an integer, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., then I'll get the molecular formula. So in the case of C6H6, n is equal to 6, C7H7, n would be 7, and then here n would be 8, and here n would be 100. So it's always possible, given a molecular formula, to reduce it down to its empirical formula. So let's go over another example of a molecular formula and see if we can't find the empirical formula. So suppose I have the molecular formula S8. So what's the empirical formula of S8? It's just S or S1. Since there's no other atoms and the empirical formula shows the relative numbers of atoms, anytime we have an element by itself, it doesn't matter what the subscript is, anytime we have an element by itself, the empirical formula is just going to be one of that element. So that's pretty easy. Now there are certain cases where the empirical formula and the molecular formula are identical. Can you think of a molecule in which the empirical formula is the same as the molecular formula? How about water? The empirical formula for water is also H2O. There's no way to reduce this down to any other whole number ratio of atoms. Also, carbon monoxide, CO, that's another compound in which the empirical formula is the same as the molecular formula. So let's go through one more example before I end this video. Suppose we have C12H24O12. What is the empirical formula for C12H24O12? Well, to get the empirical formula, really all we need to do is find the greatest common factor of all of these subscripts. So within the 12, the 24, and the 12, we need to find the greatest common factor and that's usually done by dividing by the smallest value. And then if you don't get a whole number, you can divide by half the smallest value. And then if you still don't get a whole number, you can divide by a third of the smallest value, and so on and so forth. So it turns out that the greatest common factor of 12, 24, and 12 is just going to be 12. And if I divide all of these subscripts by 12, then I'll have my empirical formula. So 
C H O. If I divide 12 by 12, that's just going to be 1. If I, divide, if I divide 24 by 12, that's just going to be 2. And if I divide 12 by 12 again, that's just going to be 1. So the empirical formula of C12H24O12 is C1H2O1, or just CH2O. So as I said earlier, you can always go from the molecular formula to the empirical formula. Anytime you're given a molecular formula, you can always find the empirical formula. However, it's not necessarily true that, the, uh, that you can find the reverse. What do I mean? Suppose you're given the empirical formula CH2O or any other empirical formula for that matter. You need more information to find out the molecular formula. The empirical formula alone is not enough to determine the molecular formula. So there you go. That's a lesson on empirical and molecular formulas.